Got another master class for you today. So fasten your seat belts, get ready, get ready, get ready. We're going to get into some deep stuff today. And uh, we're going to just build on what I've been teaching since January. And we, can you believe it's May already? So uh, we're getting into some stuff. We stand up first and uh, be friendly to somebody. Give them a big smile. Somebody needs your smile today. Yes, hallelujah. We're glad you're here today. Welcome to Summit. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Going to talk some more today. Just keep standing. Say, I'm born of God. I'm born of, God. I'm born of the Word. I'm born of the Word. It's, my it's my nature to do the Word. I do not struggle to do the Word. I do, I do, the, word I do the Word naturally. Therefore, today, Therefore, today I will understand the Word of His grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never, ever, ever, I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Now sit down with your sweet, smart, beautiful self. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to dive right in here. Romans 8.14 from the New Century Version. The true children of God are those who let God's Spirit lead them. The true children of God are those who are who are those who let God's Spirit lead them. As many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. I encourage you to take some good notes today. We're going to lay some, like I said, some deep stuff on you. And um, one translation says led by the Spirit. As many as are led, the word led, I shared this with you before, but I want to bring it back to you now, is ago in the Greek. It means to bring, to carry, to bring or to carry. So when we're led by the Spirit, we are carried by the Spirit. Like if you're in an airplane and you're flying to Los Angeles, it is the airplane's responsibility to get you there. It's carrying you to Los Angeles. The Spirit of God is carrying us when, he, when we yield ourselves and allow ourselves to be led. <clears throat> Another thing I mentioned is very important. God will never lead you by fear. Fear is very dangerous. God is not in the fear business. <clears throat> That's the devil. Fear, just like faith, is a spiritual force. Now listen to this statement. Fear is a connector. Avoid fear at all costs because fear is a connector. What do I mean by that? It connects you to the object of your fear. You don't want to be connected. <laughs> To the object of your fear. Fear is a, connect, a, a connector to the object of your fear. It connects you to evil. When you fear something, what do I, what do I mean by, by it? it connects you to the object of your fear? When you are afraid of something, whatever that is you're afraid of, it connects you to it. And um, fear is faith perverted. It's believing in what the devil says. Fear is negative faith. When you're afraid, the reason why you're afraid is because you believe that the thing that you're fearing is powerful and has the ability to happen. Otherwise, you wouldn't be afraid. Okay, that's not the uh, main objective here today or the main course. That's just that. Appetizer, but stay away from fear, and God will never lead you by fear. There's a definite, specific plan of God for your life. God has a plan. We, we don't have any time. We've been confessing this. I'm not sidetracked. I'll not be sidelined. There's no time for that. 
Your life is not an experiment. <laughs> we should be operating in God's plan. God has a very specific plan for your life. Functioning in that plan is success. Functioning in that plan will bring fulfillment, success, peace, fulfillment, pleasantness. How many of you know it's important to function in God's plan? 1 Corinthians 2.9, we looked at this. We'll go over it again. This is one of our key verses. Oh, man, that's small on that screen back there. But that's okay. We've been going over it and over it. And um, you can, you got your smartphones or your tab tablets or, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. So uh, bring it up and look at this. We won't spend much time here, but I want to mention a couple of things that I haven't shared before. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. Now I covered that you cannot perceive what God has for you through your senses. God's got some wonderful things for you people. All right? But you can't perceive them with your senses. These are things that in the Old Covenant were hidden. These are things that the devil didn't even know about. Had he known about them, that he never would have crucified the Lord of glory. The Bible's clear about that. Okay, so the, the, the devil, he doesn't know everything. He didn't, he didn't know what was coming when the cross hit him. Okay? We, we're, we're living in the time of the New Covenant. We're living in great times here where... The Spirit of God leads us, and the things that were hidden in time past in the Old Covenant are now revealed. What the Bible calls hidden wisdom is now revealed, all right? These things, now some people stop reading after verse 9, but verse 10 tells us that the things that you can't perceive with your senses, what? God, these things, God has revealed to us. How? Through the Spirit. So it's important to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, to hear from the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received. Say we have received. We have received not the Spirit of the world. Following the Spirit of the world will get you in trouble. We've, we, we've not received the spirit of the world, but, the, but, but, but who? We've received the spirit who, not it, the spirit who is from God. What for? That we might understand. See, the context is understanding this hidden wisdom that was hidden in ages past. Watch this. That we might understand the things freely given us by God. Freely given is charizomai. Uh, it's in the same family of words as charis, which means grace. It's the Greek word for grace. Charizomai, freely given to us. What charizomai means? What God has given by his grace, graciously given us all things. Amen. Amen. Freely given. <clears throat> Say freely given. Freely. Say charizomai. All right, now, Romans tells us that in, verse, in chapter 8, he who did not spare his own son, Romans 8, 30, 32, but delivered him up for us all, the ESV says, how will he not with him graciously give us all things? That word graciously is the same Greek word translated freely given right here. 